Hello, I am going to go over what is involved with converting a single line text box to a multi-line text box. You can see that the multi-line text box have these scroll bars and that is the key indicator that you are able to adjust the height as needed for these types of boxes. The single lines you cannot. Um, so the most common reason why offices are going to want to convert from a single line to a multi-line is just if you are typing a lot into a field and you're coming across situations where you are typing a lot and you can't see what you typed. So there is one option that you can do that may work for you that's quick and easy without actually going into edit mode. And that would be turning on a feature under EHR settings and then page options. You've got this display tooltip on mouse hover for fields with scroll bars, which I think it's actually supposed to say without scroll bars, but nonetheless, what it will do is enable you to just hover over your field and it's going to display what is typed into it. Okay, so nice and easy there. So just a quick alternative. Um, one thing that I would like to point out that you will find in single line boxes that is not available in multi-line boxes is, it has to actually do with the F9s. So when you start typing a letter, it's going to try to intuitively match what you may be typing based upon your F9s. So as an example, we've got continue manage care. So if we come in here and we type in C, it's going to go to that first option. All right, you do not get that with multi-line text boxes. It's just not an option. So just be aware that you will lose that. And if you are okay with that and the first option is not going to work for you, we'll go ahead and dive into converting. All right, so for that, of course, we are going to need to go into edit mode. If you have not watched the basics of editing video yet, you may want to watch that just so you have a good grasp on editing and it'll just give you a quick rundown going into edit mode and out of edit mode is going to take a moment for the system to render everything just be aware of that if you see not responding it's still processing so just give it a moment there we go okay for now we'll minimize this so what we first need to do is we need to make a little bit of room what i'm going to do is i'm going to convert these first three boxes to multi-line plan boxes so to make a little bit of room, what I am going to actually do is I am going to um, first move these buttons out of the way. And the reason why is because to make more room, we don't have to actually like individually grab all of these items and push everything down manually. That would be a nightmare. What we can do instead is we can right click where this little gap is and we want to make the gap bigger. So what will happen is we can right click and we can push fields down. But as you can see, it's going to push everything down, which is creating a gap in our buttons. So let's go ahead and move those out of the way real quick. I'm just going to close that gap again. All right, so I'm going to just drag around all of these to highlight them and then right click and drag and release. All right, get those out of the way for just a moment. Now we're in a good spot where we can right click in this gap and we'll push everything down just a few times. I believe it pushes it down about five pixels at a time. There's not a way to do more or less, so that is what it is. Okay, let's do the same thing for these and the same thing for that one. Okay, awesome. Actually, I think I did one more that I wanted to there. There we go. Okay, now it looks normal. Okay, so now what we'll need to do is we need to convert these boxes. So we're going to go ahead and open up our edit records window again, which if you're not familiar, it just docks right at the bottom of your screen. Okay, so let's go to field number 348, which is our first plan row. And what we're going to do is change the type from text with one line box to, you can do a two line or a four line. I usually just do custom height um, just because that's what I usually do. <laughs> it's, it's essentially, it's pretty much the same as like a four line text box. I'm just in the habit of doing that one. And as you can see, once we change it, we not only have 
row one of F9 keys, but we actually have two, three, and four. So every time you press F9, you're going to get the first row. If you select something, you press F9 again, you're gonna get the second row. So you can make these different if you want to based upon the times that you're going to press the button. I typically just copy the first one down and that is usually sufficient. Okay, so once we've got that changed, what we're going to do is click on our field and we're going to press delete on the keyboard and delete it off. Okay, now we're going to click on the field that was there. Well, not that was there, but the field ID that was there. And we're going to right click and add field to tab. All right, so as you can see, it's a big box. It's not the same font, and so we do need to convert that. What we're gonna do is we're going to have it take the same font properties as one of these other ones. So I'm just gonna double click into one of these fields, and you're gonna see that the default font and text is going to change down here from the default to whatever this is. So double click, okay, you see that change. Now we can go ahead and click in here and change font, and then it's gonna be the same font size as the other ones, okay? And then the second thing we're gonna do is we're going to make it the same width as this. So let's go ahead and click in this field. We're gonna left click in this field. We're going to right click in this field and do Alt W, okay? And then we can also left align it by doing Alt L All right, and then we're gonna click on this again and we're gonna align it with the tops of these fields. We don't want everything to be a mess. So left click in this one, right click in this one, and Alt T. All right, and then the next thing we need to do, to do is just make it a little bit uh, shorter. So with that, you can do Shift minus a couple times. Okay, that's good. If you make it too short, no worries. You can just do Shift plus. Perfect. All right, so there's that. If you did want a little reminder for what the shortcuts are, you can click help, and that reminds you how to increase the width and the height, um, and also the uh, keyboard settings. So Alt W, same width, align the tops, same width and height, we'll do this one next. So there's your little reminder. Again, that's just on the little help button up here. Cool. Okay, 348 is done. Let's go on to 6031 and then 6032. These ones will go pretty quickly. Okay, so 6031, change it to custom height. It's already going to copy everything down, which is great. So now we want to delete 6031. Click on it here. Right click and add field to tab. And then same thing. Um, we're gonna click in it, we're gonna change the font. It's still got that same font captured. And then this time we're going to left click in this field, we're gonna right click in this one, and we'll do Alt Q. That's gonna make it the same width and the same height, so we need to do less work. We're gonna do Alt L to left align it, and then we're going to do the top. So left click in this one, right click in this one, Alt T. Very good. And then let's go on to 6032. It is super important that when you are adding these fields back on, that you do not create a brand new field, that you are adding the same field on that you are deleting. The reason for that is because the, the history is held in the field IDs, and then also the buttons are all programmed against this field ID. So if you just add in a random number, then um, yeah, it's gonna mess things up. So if you delete it without knowing what number it was, don't just add anything random on, just click close and it'll ask you if you wanna save your changes, just say no. And then you can come back in and uh, make sure you take note of the field ID. Okay, so 6032, let's get it out of there. We'll go ahead in here and I actually didn't change the type yet, which is fine because I haven't added it. So we'll do that. Right click, add field to tab. For now, let's minimize that. Okay, and left click in this one change the font, left click again, right click in this one, Alt Q, Alt L, 
left click in this one, right click in this one, and Alt T. Okay, awesome. So um, that is pretty much it as far as like the layout goes. Let's do a quick save and save in this iteration. So file save. Yes. The last thing that we need to do is we need to do the tab order. So the uh, system goes in like a special sequence. So that way when you press enter or tab and you're filling out the records, it just doesn't go crazy all over the place. So because we re-added these on, it's uh, we just have to redo it. So we can see it goes from like 24 to 28. Um, not really sure where 25 is. Okay, yeah. It actually, this is 25. And sometimes when you're adding and removing things and you're doing the tab order, um, it's, I don't know what happens. It's kind of a bug, but it's a little bit too much for the system to process. So let's actually get out of edit mode, save or change. We'll come back into edit mode and we'll redo the tab order. So let's save records, choose our test patient and click yes. Okay, we'll go back into edit mode. All right, minimize this guy again for now. Go back into the AMP. Okay, now we should be able to, there we go. Now we've got the tab order updated. We can change it. So for, to do that, we're going to click reorder at the bottom here. And it it's a mess now. You can obviously see that. So all of the buttons have their own overlays and everything. We need to move these overlays out of the way. So we're actually going to go back into move item. So click down here again. That brings us back to the regular mode. And then the second time that we go into reorder, we'll actually be able to just move those button overlays out of the way. Okay, just click like that. And let's get those out of the way. You don't need to worry about moving them back into place. Once you save and, and everything, it'll automatically reset them. So that's totally fine. All right, so we want to go from 24. And we want the next one to be 25. So we can just highlight the first number. That's the tab order and do 25. Click into the next one. The system will automatically start to resynchronize the numbers as we click out of it. So that is nice, 27. All right, now we've got a good sequence, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. All right, that's great. Let's go back into the regular mode one more time. Let's click move item, and we need to put those buttons back. So let's just do that real quick, just to go full circle here. Again, clicking and dragging and right click and hold and release right click hold and release okay awesome now let's save again and take a look at everything all right go to amp okay so now if you're like what happened i did my changes where are they it's because of versioning versioning is going to um, preserve your records in the template that they were started in if you have already started the record. So we did, we created the record, we started typing into it. So it's preserving it in that iteration of the template. Since we're in a test patient, we can basically just go ahead and delete this record and start a fresh one. So record information, delete medical record. Yes, that is fine. Don't do that in a real patient unless you're really sure. And then we'll go back into our test patient and brand new record. So we'll be able to see the changes that we made. Okay, awesome. So that is basically it. Now um, you've got enough room where you can type and all of that. Uh, the F9s we talked about earlier, so the first time you press the F9, you get the F9-1, and then press it again, you would get row two if they were different. So that's what I was talking about when I was saying you can have up to four different F9s with the multi-lines. But Okay, there's that. All right, cool. Uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.